I want to start reading here in the third verse. I want to read, kind of just read some, skip some. I'd like to read the whole passage here. And uh, I kind of do want to reference it at, 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 throughout this message, the entire passage. But uh, let's, just, let's just skip read through it. That'd be all right. Now Samuel was dead. And all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. The Philistines gathered themselves together, came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Verse number 14. And he said unto her, let, let, let me, let, let me get, let's just read some more right here for a minute. Saul said to his servant, Seek me a woman that had a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that had a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself, put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him. They came to the woman by night and said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, who I shall name unto thee. The woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul had done. I cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul sware to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Verse 14, And he said unto her, What is the form? Is he up? What form is he up? She said, An old man cometh up. He's covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground, and he bowed himself. Verse 16. Then said Samuel, When dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and has become thy enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of his hand. And given it to thy neighbor, even unto David. Verse number 20. Then Saul fell straightway, all along on the earth, face down, splat, and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel, because there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all the day, nor the night. This story here is the Philistines have camped there, and they pitched themselves and shoot them. And Saul and the, and the people of Israel are gathered together in Mount Gilboa. And they're looking down upon the Philistines and they don't know what's going to happen. The battle is certain. A war is going on and they know that it's going to be bad. Both of them, both the Israelites and the Philistines were both forces to be reckoned with. All of them were well capable men on the battlefield. So somebody, when the battle starts, is going to be a wife left a widow. There's going to be a mother left with no son. There's going to be a sister left with no brother. A dad left with no son. Amen. Grief is going to come. They're sure about it. And so in, the, in this frustration and in this, in this time of estrangement from God, Saul says, go find me somebody that has a familiar spirit. Go find me a, a witch. It's really what he wanted. Go find me a witch. Saul had already put out the wizards out of the land and the witches and the, all of those kind of people. Great thing that he done. It'd be wonderful if that happened in our land today. You said, I don't believe in it. Don't believe there are. I want to tell you this morning, there are people this morning that are as passionate about their servitude to Satan as what we are about our servitude to God. They are our enemy. He is our enemy and we don't want to have any dealings with them of any kind. Amen. People that get involved in Ouija boards and get involved in horse scopes and get involved in tarot cards and things of that nature, palm reading. Amen. All of that is a prime way to open yourself up to demonic possession. Right. We shouldn't have any dealings with anything like that at all. Completely avoid it at all costs. I'm reminded some years ago we were in a, uh, in a large flea market. Jennifer and I, another preacher in this family, and as we turned down a long aisle with boots on either side, there was a woman on the end, 
that stepped out and began to wave at me and the other preacher, wave her hands at us and say, no, no. We got down closer to where she was and she asked us if we'd go over an aisle or two from where we were. And uh, I asked her why. And she said, I'm a palm reader. I'm a witch. Amen. I read palms. I tell the future. I look into the future in this crystal ball. And she said, none of the things that I do will work right while you men are on this aisle with me. Amen. It made me feel good. I was glad she didn't get anointed while I was there. There's something about the power of God that puts a damper on the power of the enemy. But Saul has gone from being anointed of God. God. He was chosen by God. He was sought out by the prophet of God. And time has passed and years have came and gone. And now Saul has gone from going to Samuel for help to going to a witch to call up a dead man. What a journey it was. I want you to notice this morning, it wasn't very far. It wasn't very many pages. If, if you read your Bible, you'll not turn too many pages from the time when Saul is the Lord's anointed till the time when he has got a cloak over his head, some kind of an old dark hoodie pulled down. And under the cover of darkness, he slides into the witch's hut in some kind of a spooky seance no doubt probably with candles burning with some kind of an old skull sitting on the table. No telling what kind of an atmosphere that it was. A man saw a man that had prophesied. A man that God's spirit had moved on. A man that God had anointed. It's now down in that old spooky hut with the witch down in indoor. I want to tell you something this morning. There's not a lot of distance as much as what you think between us and this aster. There's not a lot of distance between the people of God and those people that are out there doing those things. When we begin to draw back on the spirit of God, when we begin to do things we know better than to do, when we begin to open ourselves up to the world, I'm telling you it's not a long, long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take years and years uh, for people to get themselves in trouble. Uh, I want to tell you this morning, one inch uh, out from under the blood of Jesus Christ uh, is hundreds of miles too far. Uh, and they're just stepping a little bit away from God. Uh, you say, there's something I want to do or I want to take this on. Uh, you better be careful about that. Uh, it may end you up down in a witch's hut before it's over. Yeah, big God. Yeah. Mount Gilboa it's only about 16 miles from Endor. High up on that mountain where God had visited them before. High up on top of a mountain where God's people were put out into ranks. Awaiting a coming battle. And the man of God. Anointed of God. But at this time in his life, he's estranged from God. He's been rejected by the Lord. Remember what God told Samuel. Samuel's praying after Saul was supposed to have destroyed the Amalek, Amalekites. He's already supposed to destroy the Agag. He's already supposed to kill them, kill the women, kill the sucklings, kill all the cattle, and he kept some of them back. And remember that that, that moment he came in, and the man of God, Samuel, said to Saul, what means this bleeding of the sheep and this lowing of the oxen I hear? And then Samuel, I began to hear something, and Saul said, there's nothing going on here. And then I'm going to tell you something, the Holy Ghost still knows things uh, that you don't think anybody knows. Uh, the Holy Ghost is still well able uh, to let the man of God hear the bleeding of the sheep uh, and the lowing of the oxen. But it was on that day, uh, and then in an act of disobedience and rebellion and selfishness, uh, that God spoke through Samuel's mouth uh, and said, Saul, I'm rejoicing rejecting you and that you're no longer my chosen and God's spirit lifts on Saul and is set by the hand of God upon David stay with me just a little bit I'll hurry along the journey from Saul's anointing to Saul's seance was really a short one it didn't take a lot of years Samuel praying one day sniffling and crying and he said that the Lord spoke to Samuel and he said Samuel how long are you going to weep over Saul, seeing I've rejected him from being king? I don't want no part of Saul. Saul didn't want any part of me. And he walked out on God. Saul began to do what he wanted to do. He married the women he wanted to marry. He went to the places he wanted to go. Saul was filled up with himself. Yes. Remember the time when the man of God looked at Saul? 
And he said, oh, Saul, when you was little in your own eyes, back a little while ago, before you got so full of yourself, I was moving on you. There was a time that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul, and he prophesied. And the Bible said, I guess wherefore it is said unto this day, is Saul among the prophets. It's hard for me to believe this morning. It's hard for me to believe that a man who was anointed by God and prophesied is now clutched under a dark robe with his eyes darting to and fro, slipping down away from his people that he's king over, slipping out from in front of his captains and his hosts, and he sneaks down and slides into the tent with a witch, and he tells her, bring Samuel up. Wait a minute. You didn't want to hear from Samuel a little while ago. You didn't want that preacher telling you what you've done wrong. You didn't want that preacher putting his finger in your face. I've seen young people do it. I've seen middle-aged people do it, getting all the outs with a preacher. I don't want that homeless preacher I've heard him say, hey, man, I don't want your finger in my face anymore. I'm telling you, life's got a funny way of making a twist and making a turn until in a moment of estrangement from God, when Saul's spirit was troubled and he could not get an answer from God, and God had gone silent to Saul, he said, go down there and get the wind and tell her to stir the dead up and bring me that old preacher man up again. Amen. Let me hear from the preacher again. I'm going to tell you something this morning. If you and I get out from under the covenant of God's grace, if we step out of the covenant of his blood, heaven the day may come and we're saying, call up that preacher. Get a hold of Red Hall. Get a hold of Mama. Amen. Somebody get a hold of them. I Rebellion is that the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. You can never prosper with God if your heart's rebellious. That's right. You cannot. If your feeling is always, wait a minute, I want to do this. Wait a minute, preacher, I want to do that. Hold on a second, mama. This is what I want to do. If it is contrary to the word of God, you may find yourself in a witch's hut. It was just a 16 mile trip that dark night. It wasn't really all that far. From Mount Gilboa, down off the hill, across the plain just a little way, 16 short miles. That like going from here to Langley. 16 miles was a thousand miles in spirit miles. The distance as he went down to that witch. Think about it. This man's prophesied. He's been victorious. He's been anointed. And now here he stands in disobedience and disaster. Saying, oh, witch, get me the man of God. I know it seems like it's far out to think about this morning. I know it seems like there's no way it could be true. Brother Justin, you're preaching to a little congregation of good people in these mountains. And I thank God for every one of you. But i got to tell you, it's from good congregations in little churches across America that many a man and woman has walked away with their heart bitter towards the Lord. Yes. Their ears turned off to hear the word of God. Their hearts set to go their own way. And many, many times they tried to get back. Saul couldn't get it by Urim. He couldn't get it by prophetess. He couldn't get an answer from God legitimately. And so he seeks a witch. And you say this morning, well, I'll never do that. I would never go to a witch and say, call up Brother Hamas Crawford to me. Call up Brother Dillard for me. I would never go seek to a witch. I'm anointed. I've had the Holy Ghost. You don't understand how good I live. I want to tell you, you've never been any more anointed than Saul had been. You've not prophesied any more than Saul had prophesied. Oh, I want to, I, I, and like I said, I hope this, all of this is uh I'm trying to just ease along, kind of preach this and hurry up and get out of here, you know, because I don't like preaching about things like this. The man's been on my mind for weeks now. How far is the distance from the church to the witch? How far away is the witch from you? Oh, I would never do that. I'm telling you, if you saw King Saul, when the Spirit of God rested on him, 
His hands raised towards heaven, his eyes set towards the glories of God and prophecy coming out of his mouth. And all the people in all before him, Samuel anointing his head with oil, the oil running down the beard of that man. You'd have never dreamed that he'd have pulled that old hood up around his head and cloaked himself and went down hoping nobody sees me. I'm going down to see the witch. Hard to believe that this man ended up with a witch. Ten times in the book of Judges we find Samson going down. You ever get on the elevator, push the button, and it says, going down. And that funny little voice, going down. <laughs> Brother Ben Shaw was on an elevator somewhere, probably in the hospital in Texas, Canada. It's full. Brother Shaw said he looked at all those people in there and he said, you ever notice how when you're going up, the air is white and bright? And every time you start going down, the air is red. He said, I guess it's because there's red hot fire. We go down far enough and there's bright white. We go up high enough. The door opened. Brother Shaw said, I just walked out. Let the door shut behind me. Let them all think about it while they rode the elevator down. I want to know this morning. I, I, okay, let's do it like this. I have, I have, at times in my life, I've willingly pushed a button on the elevator of life, and I've heard the elevator say, going down. Can you be honest enough this morning and say there's been times in your life that you knew you pushed the wrong button? You knew you made the wrong decision, but you never pulled the alarm and got off the elevator. You just kept going down. Down. It's hard to believe. I don't want to single people out, but it's hard to believe. Sister Nancy testified just a few services ago. You see her shouting and speaking in tongues and tears running down her face. And it's hard to believe that just one page ago, she said, I didn't even want to hear his name. Because she pushed the wrong button on life's elevator. <clears throat> she was going down. But every elevator that goes down can also go back up again. <laughs> Woo! If you just push the right button, you don't have to ride that thing to the bottom. Oh, I got thinking a lot like this. You ride the elevator in the hospital far enough down, you know what? You'll find the cooler with the drawers in there where the morgue's at. And it'll open out an entrance if nobody else comes in. It's just to carry out the dead and to carry out the trash. Are y'all helping me this morning? Maybe you may be on the 45th floor and you're headed down. But somewhere at 40, 39, 36, 28. Maybe get your finger and push the button. And start going back up. Maybe go right in all the way to the witch's house. Don't end up with a witch. Samson was used of God, anointed of God. The Spirit of the Lord is moving on him at times, the Bible said. But he went down to Timnath. He went down to the Philistine. He went down to the woman. He went down to Ashkelon. He went down to Gaza. He went down to the harlot. He went down to the valley of Sorek. He laid his head down in Delilah's lap. He went down to the prison house. They've been ten times in Judges. You find Samson going down. Oh, hallelujah. It's no mystery. Why people's lives spin so far out of control. The devil seems like it's so smooth at convincing them once you push the down button, you've got to ride it to the bottom. That's not true. You can go back up today. We read about the man, and I'll close with this. We read about the man that the Bible said went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem's the church. Jericho's the world. I know this is all simple, and I don't want to insult your intelligence to make you think I think you're dumb preaching this. But let me just again, in case you didn't know, the trip from church to the world is always a downhill trip. The trip from God to self is always a downhill trip. Why'd you say self? Because the Bible said the backslider in heart should be filled with his own devices. You know why people backslide? Because they want their own way. They want to do their own thing. Was it Frank Sinatra that wrote the song, I Did It My Way? 
Was it him? I'm pretty sure. True. In my mind, true. I'm remembering it that way. If I don't have it right, don't you? Don't you? Uh, don't you run me off? Tell him I misquoted it all. I'm pretty sure he's the one. At least the summit. I did it my own way. I wonder this morning if, if the witch called up Frank Sinatra. I wonder what he'd have to tell us today. How'd that work out for you, Frankie boy? How to do it in your own way? Work for you now. There's a lot of people in that little old church down there in the south where Elvis Presley's mother took him to hear Brother Paul Neely preach revival. And they told him about how Elvis shouted and sung at the edge of the roster with Brother Claude. And years came and went. That old assembly of God preacher said, I come by the church at Tupelo that day and a motorcycle in the parking lot and a man sitting on the planter out front crying. And he tapped him on the shoulder. Who was it? It was the key sitting there, the key of rock and roll. And he said, what are you doing, son? He said, I just wanted to see if I could ever get back again. And then they found him that morning where he'd taken his life and where the devil had robbed him. I'm going to tell you something this morning. It ain't a long, long way when you start down away from God. When you start distancing yourself from the Spirit of the Lord. It won't be very long. Till you went further than you. What the old song say? Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Slowly but holy, taking control. Sin will leave you longer than you want to stay. Sin will cost you far more than you want to pay. I know. I forgot myself this morning. I'm preaching with a burden today that I've slept with for weeks on end. I know what I know. I know the congregation. I look around and see who we are. Amen. But I feel like warning us this morning. Don't ever take a step in the wrong direction. You don't realize how fast you can go from the anointing to a witch. And he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell. Did you ever fall upstairs? If he fell, then he fell down. He said, preacher, you're putting words in the Bible. You're stuffing stuff in there you're going to say. Okay. Well, you explained to me this morning how he fell among thieves without falling. He went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among thieves. They stripped him. They wounded him. They robbed him, and they left him half dead. And where did the man find him? In the ditch. Every ditch except in Howe County, Missouri, under the previous administration. Every ditch should be lower than the road. The middle of the road should be a crown, dropping down to the ditch so that it sheds water and keeps the road from flooding out. Now, there was a man in Howe County, Missouri, that built ditches high and the road went down to a V, and then we put gravel on it. Every time we had a rain, he put more gravel. Every time we rain, put more gravel. I went and took a napkin one morning, Sister Jean drew him a picture how to build a road. He said, maybe you should run for county commissioner. I said, maybe you should use this napkin to do your job. You're costing the state thousands by building the road this way. But if you fall into a ditch, anywhere except western Howe County, Missouri, you're going to fall down off the road. Am I right? If you run off the road, isn't it usually down? This man went down to Jericho, down to the thieves, down in the ditch. What happened to him? Along come a man, and he picked him up out of the ditch. He put him up upon a donkey, and he carried him into the hotel. Praise God. What happened to Samson? He went down, 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 down ten times. But in the very last of Samson's life, he bowed his head and he lifted up his heart unto the Lord and he said, God avenge me. And the Bible said he slew more Philistines at his death than he did in his whole life. He didn't end up that way to Saul. He went back up on down Hill Boab and he died there. I want to tell you something this morning. If you'll use the same finger you used to push down and you'll push up, you can start the process of coming back up. You don't have to ride the elevator all the way to the bottom. Praise God. Let's stand this morning. The last night we were in the homecoming there where we've been preaching. I, if I preached that night, it didn't go that way, but if I would have ever took the pulpit, 
I probably would have used these scriptures and maybe they would fit that congregation better because there were so many sinners and backsliders. And I felt like warning us this morning. You said, Brother really Justin, I've been in church 50 years. I've been raised here. I've got the Holy Ghost. So did Saul. Saul was anointed by God, chosen by the Lord himself. And you see where he ended up. None of us have got it made yet. Well done has not been spoken. Your crown may be ready. Your mansion may be ready. But you will not inherit it until you hear the Lord say, well done. You can backslide. Do you know it? You can lose out with God. So today, unfortunately, I'd like to make you shout. But unfortunately today, I'm warning us that the distance from the anointing of God to the witch is not really all that far. Just about 16 miles for Saul. But my, what a trip it was. I want to tell you something today. The trip away from God is always a downhill trip. It's always slippery. It's always faster than they intended. And it always goes farther and leaves longer and costs more. Push the button. Let's go up today. Praise God. Say, baby, get ready. Let's come pray and seek the Lord, would you?